188 versus 5,000. They killed around 600 enemy soldiers. They held for 13 days. These were not ordinary men. February 23rd through March 6th, 1836, San Antonio, Northern Mexico. Remember the Alamo. Why do we say this? Why do we remember a losing fight? I'm Texan, so remember Goliath as well. Most battles throughout history are rarely remembered. Those that are, are almost exclusively victories. Why then do we remember this? Why do we attach a word of memory to something that didn't work? It's for the same reason that we know about the 300 at Thermopylae and the thousands of thespians and the warriors of Lesbos because they lost a battle they knew they were going to to give them a devil's chance to win the war. We don't remember them because they were brave, though it defines the very word. We remember them because it worked. Because the great horde of history did not descend upon them and wipe them all out. But rather, the brave few who sacrificed to buy time. In the market, what this means is sometimes we cut our losses on a bad bet in order to go with what has a better chance of retaking some ground. We don't let our calls burn to nothing. Instead, we accept the loss and remember them bravely for the investments that they were. We honor them by staying in the fight. And with a little luck and grace and cunning, we can win the full day. Then we elevate them from sacrifice to sacred. Welcome back to You've Made Worse Bets. I'm your host, CJ. We're an entertainment show. Neon lights? Check. Co-host due diligence the bear? Check. He's the strong silent type. Number one? Check. j -pow? The word stonk? Triple check. We are not financial advice or investment advice. We are absolutely gambling advice, though. Remember, gang, that today, according to lots of those little number things, is the best single day of the week to buy SPY SSO 30 minutes before close. This simple swing trading strategy alone will work out wildly over time. Now that Tesla's in the mix, volatility is even greater. My Tesla calls are ridiculously green and I couldn't be happier. If you would like a good story to go along with it, here's mine. A lot of big money does not trust China EVs right now. As such, Tesla is the new Tesla. It also has the benefit of still being the old Tesla. Bet accordingly. The Alamo was built on a mission. It was only fortified against American Indian attacks. Think bows and arrows. Low walls were almost a mockery of the concept of the modern day rifleman. No firing forts. They had hastily constructed these catwalks to get across, but using them even required you getting up and putting your belly and your head exposed. It was a Texian grave. And they knew it. President General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana was not happy about having illegal immigrants in his land. He was keen on sending a message, though. It would be one born of bones, bullets, and blood. 20 years ago, I wrote a paper that's now in the Congressional Archives. It was a freshman assignment at my first college, UTSA, the University of Texas in San Antonio. We're all part of this great story, one way or another. More on that later. Here's what I like for the day. Ride. It almost made my list today. Um, Two-day pattern of big money. The dip yesterday was temporary if we scale back time for more than a week. And I just really love this EV market space. ATVI, uh, big money two-day pattern, down on the five-day, and it's good to have three things. Facebook. Zuck had two days of big money. It doubled from Monday to Tuesday's investment, and something's up. I'm going to get calls about two weeks out. LAZR. So average price targets have this at about 36. Uh, high end's about 40. We've got lots of room to run. It also historically kind of likes these Wednesday pops. Time will tell. PRCH. Big money moved in last week and hasn't moved out. And yesterday's flood also was there. I'm getting calls. QCOM. 
the big money move today is a tell. Um, I also look at the dip and the one month, the RSI and the volume is also pretty good. It's just kind of a perfect storm for me. Six, this is a bit different than my usual place. Um, I'll go out a few months on this one, but it's almost back to where it was a full year ago. Full disclosure, I'm a season pass holder. I've got four kids, a wife. We go to San Antonio and love it. Six flags over Texas and one of the big few places that's still good to go and standing after all this Rona. You've made worse bets. CGC, great dip. Uh, don't wait till 2.5 hours on this one. It's the like picks and shovels of the new gold mine. Get in today and out by Friday, Monday with a tidy profit and then reposition. Weed plays go up from here. Blackberry, um, it's down 10% on the month. I like the growing volume, and we're uh, starting to see big money move back in. I'm in. The Alamo was built as a miss mission. It was fortified, like we said, against American Indian attacks. These low walls, though, these low walls, they were a concept that had met their time in the war's past. Now, Santa Ana had brought cannons. He'd brought guns. He was not here to talk. The Texans, though, had their own cannons. Sam Houston had dispatched James Bowie to get the artillery out of there. He would not be successful. It was a death sentence to even be there. But there was that famous moment when that line in the sand was drawn, all but one man chose death. Is it risky to be brave? Almost always. But there's a reason it stands out. Perhaps we fall. Or perhaps we get a wicked knife named after us. He wrote to Governor Henry Smith. The letter ended with, Colonel Neal and myself have come to the solemn resolution that we will rather die in these ditches than give it up to the enemy. They kept that vow. The Mexican army did send dispatches to ask if they have the cannons, please. The uh, future Texas legends responded with an equally amount of uh, civility, more or less. Goliad isn't remembered as well or known as well because it wasn't really a fight. It was a slaughter. It preceded the Alamo and it showed the worth of the head of the Mexican army. General President Santa Ana had shown at Goliad that his road to glory was one of blood. His route was a simple one. He was a simple man. Students of slaughter have a way of being neutered by historians. We're the ones who write the copy. Legend holds that at some point on March 5th, Travis gathered his men and explained that an attack was imminent and that they were greatly outnumbered by the Mexican army. He supposedly drew that line in the sand and asked those willing to die for the Texian cause to cross it and stand alongside him. Only one man, Moses Rose, was said to have declined. Davy Crockett would have some words with him. Santa Ana would get his later, and I will show you what a terrible commander he was. He survived his lopsided 13-day battle. Good. Enjoy, Mr. El Presidente. William B. Travis died on his cannon. James Bowie died on his bed cot, surrounded by dead Mexican soldiers. David Crockett, according to most sources, was near the church, buried under a mound of the enemy. There's actually an alternate account saying that Crockett surrendered to the Mexican army. This is what my paper was that single score years ago. My contention is that if it's true, he did so to try and cut the head off the snake. He was attempting to kill the general. It's been a hot minute since I wrote it, but in a nutshell, Crockett was equal parts brave as he was crazy. He was the one who told Moses Rose that he shouldn't leave the Alamo. If he surrendered, it was him trying to get one last shot. It's not a long message that we send across time. It's a simple one. 
a single word command. Remember, the lesson is the remembrance as a way of all of us to express an eternal gratitude. We won't win every battle. We will make them all count. We won't allow any call to ever end worthless. This is the lesson we can take that's worth remembering. It's a big area that even twice their numbers couldn't possibly have been able to hold for half that time. I've done a research paper and nowhere have I thought it's possible they could have won this. But as I think back 20 years ago, a lot of Mexican soldiers would come to respect their enemy in the diaries and stuff that we've discovered since. When in the market, we must remember a lot of things, to be quite frank. It's easy to take our eye off the prize. The prize isn't the money. It certainly helps. The true prize is immortality. We want to be remembered once we're gone. Santa Ana didn't just burn the bodies afterward. He also tried to unload lots of them in the river. He didn't want it known what took place there. Looks like he lost. A line in the sand is a defining moment. We draw a new battle line each day. Stay sharp and don't peek your head up over that wall until it's absolutely necessary. They may win the battle, but we will make them pay for every inch. And most importantly, we will author our own future. Today, gang, remember something important and say it out loud. Remind the universe that we are more than a single moment in time, that we too have a way of deep remembrance. Ready the line and man the cannons. At times, we are under siege. Each day though, we still rise. Today, do it for Travis. Do it for Bowie, do it for Crockett and the countless others that we remember. Ride valiantly today into the light of dawn.